like you, and that's where I'm gonna stop. You guys are great back there. You're great. 2020, you know, 2019 wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. 2016 sucked. <laughs> that one sucked. 2017, oh, we cried a lot. Uh, 2018, all of a sudden, we're like, oh, now we're all soldiers. What's going on here? Uh, 2019, more building, more building blocks. They didn't say any before. Um, it sucks for women. Actually, it sucks for men right now, especially the white men, um, because we all pissed. Uh, I actually feel really nervous for white men walking down the street with a bunch of women around. It's just like, mm -mm. you keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you keep your mouth shut real tight, because uh, we don't give a fuck anymore. I'm wearing leggings as pants. Why? Because I don't care. I don't have any pockets. That's why my bag's up here. So nice. So nice. Do you have you wearing leggings as pants? Um, no. You should try. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I recommend it. And guys, I recommend it for you too. Just have a shirt that goes over your bulge. That's all we ask. We don't want to see that. Like right now, I'm covering my vaginal area. Everything is great. I feel like Winnie the Pooh. It's wonderful. I'm just like free living my life. These are fleece pants. My mom gave them to me for Christmas. I got a lot of warm things for Christmas this year, and I was like, oh, you realize I'm poor. <laughs> oh, okay. That's how it goes. I got my uh, my first flu shot in 2019. Took 35 years, but I finally got one, and now I'm invincible um, in my mind. I'm like running into cars. I'm like, come at me. I got the flu shot. <laughs> Friends are like, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. You need to calm it down. Um, you know what the flu shot doesn't help with? The stomach flu. Everybody's fucked there. That thing's been going around. Oh, man. Last week was rough. <laughs> Let me tell you, but also the stomach flu coming around the holidays, perfect. Because you lose a lot of that holiday weight. Um, that's just stories about me shitting a lot. <laughs> I feel like this is a room we could all share in. Um, I have, uh, I've been, but because of the flu shot, you know, I like to test the fates a little bit. So I've been underdressing a little bit, and um, let me tell you, it's a great workout. It's a great workout. It's uh, called shivering, and so you start to shiver while you're waiting for the train, and then you're holding your core muscles. It, listen, guys, this is how you get abs in the winter. You don't even have to go to the gym. Now you're exhausted later. You're gonna have to sit down because you use a lot of your energy because you're cold. And it's sad, but you don't even know it because your abs look great. You have them. Isn't that what we all want? Right? I guess that's what they tell us. Somebody before was saying that we all look dumb when we're having sex. Uh, I don't. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> great. Uh, if you think you look dumb, doggy style, clears that all up. Just <laughs> off the back, you know? I don't know, they look at each other, somebody put their face into a pillow. It's very comfortable, guys. <laughs> it's comfortable. Where was I gonna go? I have it all written on my hand. I've had two concussions in the past 10 years and I smoke a lot of pot. So you know, it's like, ooh, I'm really running a risk every time I walk out the door. Um, the first concussion, though, I was young, I was dumb, I was drunk. That was it, that was 25. Man, I was hanging out with my friends, we were playing Edward 40 hands. Do you guys know what that is? Oh, good, if you don't, then you're very sophisticated. You take, uh, you take two 40 ounce cans of beer and you tape them to your hands. Now that's 80 ounces, so the game is already lying. Okay? It really should be 20 ounces on each hand because then that makes sense, but you're like, oh, drunk people are dumb. So, who, and like, once you finish your beers, then you get your hands back. What a fun concept, right? And in our game, whoever won first, not only got your hands, but then you got to smoke the bowl first. And I won! I won! And then we went onto the roof, and then it was misting. And then I lost my footing, and I went down on a flight of metal stairs really fast, Matrix style. But let me tell you, I recommend being drunk when that happens. <laughs> because you're just like, this is who I am now. And you just kind of go into it. Um, it was more my friends that were upset about that, and they're still lost. I was gonna die in my sleep, but you know, here I am. I didn't. Uh, but the second one, man, the second one was a few. It was actually just a little over two and a half years ago, and I was sober. I was early for work. You know, I mean, everything was on my side. I was like skipping through the financial district into this 
help and wellness co-working space and I went to go open the door that was the size of a baseball bat because I don't know when we decided that regular door handles aren't <laughs> enough. Now we need our door handles to be fancy and it wasn't attached and it came right off and it smacked me in the head. And so then I was just like in the hallway like this. All the way. Like, like I wish I had the video of it because it looks like I was at a dizzy bat contest. Just be like, it's okay, it's okay, where am I going? Um, and then I took a photo immediately and sent it to my friend. And I just said, I need somebody to know because I don't think I'm gonna remember things in the next half hour. And I was right, I was right, that one was rough. It took a while to get my memory back. But you know, like the next three months felt like a vacation for my brain. It was wonderful. I'd wake up and I'd be like, ah, another beautiful day. <laughs> okay, all right, world, what do you have for me? Start walking down the street, I'd see a tree, I'd be like, it's a beautiful tree. Look at that tree. So many branches, so many curves, possibilities, dreams. If I was a bird, I'd live in that tree. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> And then I keep walking, I'd be like, Actually, that tree is really nice. And that was my day, deciding if I was a bird, which tree I was gonna live in. And then, you know, it's like when you're sick and you're like, oh, I can't remember how to breathe. I guess this is just how my life's gonna be. I'm always gonna be congested. And then you wake up one day and you're like, oh, this is what breathing is. That's nice. Uh, that's what happens with a concussion. You wake up one day and your memory comes back all of a sudden and you're just like, Oh my god, I have all these thoughts. What the fuck did I do for the past three months? I'm a barista? <laughs> and that's how I became a barista for a little bit. Hit your head real hard. You know how to make a flat white. It's true. <laughs> Nobody hits it. It's just coffee. It's just coffee. But now, uh, yeah, I'm getting better. Some things, names, and numbers are a little hard. Um, people just, they're like, ah, oh, you're using that as an excuse. And I'm just like, no, I wish. I wish I wasn't using it as an excuse. What's your name again? <laughs> He's like, I'm not gonna remember. I'll remember your face. Your name's gone. Yeah, <laughs> you, you're in my head. I'm always, like if I saw you in the street, I'd be like, oh, I remember where I saw her. I can tell you every detail about this whole place, except your name. Um, but you never told it to me, so we're fine. What's your name? Actually, don't, let's not ruin it. Yeah, let's not ruin it. Yeah, yeah no. what? No, you have this moment. <laughs> um, but you know what's like, one thing that I would like to kind of get out of my head, which I'm never going to be able to, um, my brother-in-law is an amazing, he's an amazing artist. God, he, he's so good to my brother. He is the breadwinner of the family. My brother's a teacher. He's a, he's a painter and one of, like his muse is my brother and he paints him all the time, naked. And so when I first started seeing the paintings, I'd go over their place when they were living in Astoria. It's not really important to the story, but I'm gonna tell you it anyway. So they're living in Astoria, and the painting was up on the wall, except they took a piece of paper, regular size, legal size paper, and put it over his dick. Great, okay. I understand what's underneath there, great. Then, next time I come over, the paper keeps getting smaller, and smaller, and smaller, and then one day it's not there. And I walk in and there's my brother naked and I'm just like, okay, yeah, he has a good body. This is not weird. And I sit down and he smoked and I'm like, we're getting high. And he was just like, did you notice? I was like, your dick on the wall? Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> I know that there's no piece of paper there. But, um, but I know that one day I'm gonna walk into like some rich person's house because I have like aspirations for myself. And I'm gonna just see like my naked brother on the wall and I'll be like, what a beautiful apartment. Oh, there's my naked brother. Oh, is this a Chardonnay? <laughs> wow, so nice. Um, but I think I might be the only person that can say I know exactly what my brother looks like naked and it's not weird. <laughs> it's not weird, that could get real weird real fast. <laughs> choice. I was like, let's do this. It's the first. And I felt so good. But you know, at 35, if you lay around all day, your body actually hurts from resting <laughs> all day. Like I had to go out for a show last night and I walked one block, my legs hurt. And I was like, oh God, what the fuck is happening? Like I'm almost recovered now. 
but it got me thinking about cloning. And I was like, maybe it's not such a bad idea, <laughs> you know? I could lay here and somebody could go do stuff for me. It's like multiplicity. Everyone loves Michael Keaton. <laughs> he was the best Batman. And he was a dad. He was Mr. Mom. He was, he was Mr. Mom. Um, I was also thinking, one of the things that I would really like if we could get rid of in 2020, the term impossible burger. <laughs> it's possible. You guys did it. <laughs> Maybe we just call it what it is. You can, you can call it, it's, it's a plant-based burger. I just call it a plant burger. Hi, I'd like one plant burger with cheese. Cool. Instead of being like, I want the impossible burger. You guys sound like cocky bastards. It's also like the term mocktail. Um, fuck you. Fuck you. Stop making a thing about my drinks. You're mocking them, literally. And I know it all came from baby showers, but we don't have to give pregnant women everything. It's juice. It's juice, and I love juice. Let's just call it that. It's a plant burger, and it's juice. Done. 2020. We're all going to fucking kill. Um, obviously, I am not a mom. I <laughs> that joke. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm on the fence. Do I want to have kids? Do I not want to have kids? I'm not sure. Um, but my name's Megan O'Malley. My initials are mom. Here's that is. What the fuck is the universe trying to tell me? <laughs> like, am I supposed to be a mom? Or am I the mother to all? No. Like, both bear a lot of responsibility. One, well, I might become a cult leader. Hey! <laughs> That's cool. I think we make a really great cult leader. Um, I have a lot of wits coming out of my mouth. And uh, listen, we would all work the land, but there'd be something for everybody. And my cult would uh, be, be really wonderful. And I feel like I know how it would happen, too. It would all be accidental. Um, one day, I've... <laughs> You know, when I find money, I'll go get a house in the woods so I can escape the city. Because I'm going to become that person. And uh, I'll come up on outside and I'll have my coffee. And one day there'll just be a bunch of people there waiting for me to speak. And I'll be like, all right, let's do this. You now follow me. You should. You should follow me. I'd be good. I'd be good to all of you. Uh, everybody could take turns. We'd all run the land. It'd be wonderful. Um, it'd be really good. But you know, it's like, I think about kids more. I'm like, I think I'd be a really good mom because I listen to a lot of murder podcasts. Um, those are podcasts about murder. And, um, <laughs> and there's a lot of parents trying to kill their kids. And I'm not going to do that. You know, like, if my kids make it to round two, which is life, I am going to <laughs> love and protect them because they're my little birds, you know? Like, like a mini me, that would be adorable. You could pick my kid out of a lineup. It'd be the one that has glue on their hands and is waiting for it to dry so they can peel it off. Like, that would be my kid. Um, I had an intervention at five with my brothers. They were like, you have to stop doing that. That's weird. You're taking off the, your skin layers. Found that out later. That's not true. It's only glue. It's only glue. You don't lose any skin. Okay? So go home. Put some glue on your hands. It'll be a lot of fun. You know? Um, but so, like, when, if I do have kids, they'll come up to me. They're like, oh, mommy, you're the worst, which you know, kids do that. Um, and I'll be like, oh, mommy's the worst. Ah, the atrocities I've committed against you. All right, guys, time to go to bed. I'm going to put on your nighttime murder podcast. And then 45 minutes later, I'll come on back and be like, so is, uh, is mommy the worst? Is she? Is mommy the worst? Did uh, mommy ever leave you out in the woods to be eaten by a bear? No, mommy didn't. Mommy ever tried driving the car off a cliff and jumping out before impact? <laughs> didn't do that either, because mommy loves you. All right, you little fuckers, see you in the morning. <laughs> just sit in it, you know? So they have to have a reason for why they're going to therapy. Get them started earlier. Then they know, like, I would probably start a notebook at, like, when they turn 13, I'd be like, here is a journal that I've started for you. Um, these are all the reasons that you're probably going to be mad at me in 10 years. Just take it right to your therapist. We can both write in it. It'll be fun. It'll be good. I had to break up with my therapist recently. Anybody go to therapy? Yay. Therapy. Yay. Therapy 
was so great. I loved my old therapist. She was wonderful. She was very soft-spoken, just like a mom. But then we started talking about her a lot because she's very concerned about politics. And I was just like, oh, but this is my dime. Like, I love a baby bird with a broken wing. That's usually what I wind up dating, but not on my dime. Like, we do this on yours. And then if my, uh, my one of my cats, so this was like two years ago, um, she was about, she was dying. So I took one week off and I went the next week and she's like, so um, how's your cat doing? And I was like, well, she, she died last week in my arms. And she's like, oh my God, I wasn't prepared for this. Um, I thought we had more time with her. What's going on? And she started crying and I was just like, are you okay? Um, I'm the one who's supposed to be in pain here right now. And she's just like, no, 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 I'll be fine, I'll be fine. I was like, oh, okay. And then at the end of the session, I had to tell her it was gonna be my last one. Like, I'm an Irish exeter. Um, and so I was just like, at the end, it made sense for me to be like, oh, right, I'm not coming back. And she was like, well, what am I gonna do? And I'm gonna have Tuesdays open at 1 p.m. And I was like, yeah, that's how it works. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna be fine. Do you think she's fine? Probably. Yeah, right? Should I, I shouldn't text her, right? No, that's me getting involved. I don't do that anymore. I let people make their own mistakes and deal with it. <sighs> Thanks. The pain fumes in here are fun, right? <laughs> I'm like, am I getting hot while up here? <laughs> um, the answer is yes. <laughs> I think I am. But I love animals more than people. I really do. Animals are so sweet. You know, it's like when they do something malicious, it's it's not to get ahead in business, it's for survival, and then I trust that more. Like, I have two cats at home, and I know if I die in my sleep, they're gonna eat me. <laughs> and that's just the deal we made a long time ago. Just because I'm dead doesn't mean they have to be. So, it's great. Like, but, you know, we were talking about broken families earlier. I come from a broken family, meaning my parents voted for Trump and me and my brothers did not. And, um, you know, it's gonna get a little rough. It's gonna get a little rough. But because they're older, I have to watch Fox News every so often, just so I know what they're getting that week. Like, oh, what's your, uh, what's your script, you know? And then there was a story that I believe Fox News wrote specifically for me. It was a little something like this. A man in Alabama was recently arrested for having an attack squirrel that was protecting his meth and drug paraphernalia. <laughs> they think 